Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here to my channel, my name is Cor and I'm your basic nurse from Southeast England. So it's been a while guys, as you have seen on my channel, I have been posting more about travels lately and not posting content about UK life. But here we are, we are trying to insert contents about my life here in the UK. So in today's vlog, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step video on applying for ILR or indefinite leave to remain under a tier 2 dependent visa. Before you proceed with your application, you have to check first if you are eligible to apply for ILR. Under a dependent of a working visa, you must live in the UK for at least 5 years with your partner. Kindly check gov.uk website for full guidance on eligibility requirements for ILR. So when can you apply? The earliest you can apply is 28 days before you reach your 5 years stay in the UK or after you have completed your 5 years period of stay but not until your current visa expires. If you apply earlier than 28 days, your application will be most likely be refused. If your visa expires before you can apply for ILR, you have to renew your leave to remain visa before you can proceed with an ILR application. Before you start your online visa application, have your passport, BRP card, life in the UK test reference number, main visa holder details, travel details outside the UK, and your debit and credit card ready. Now let's go through the step-by-step -step process in applying for indefinite leave to remain under a tier 2 dependent visa. So the first question is, are you currently in the UK? My answer is yes. And do you have other home office applications? My answer is no. And then you will register an email that you will use for this application. So I am the applicant and I'm using my own email for this application. I don't have any immigration advisor. And in which category are you applying for indefinite leave to remain? As I have mentioned earlier, I am under skilled worker tier 2 dependent visa. So my relationship to the sponsor, so I am the wife, so click partner. Now you will fill in the details of your main visa holder. So this is the person you're applying to remain in the UK with. So you would need their passport and their BRP. And if you have their national insurance number and home office reference number, you can also add that one. The next step is you will provide what type of visa is your main visa holder granted for upon entering the UK. If you have the BAF or GWF number, you can provide that. But since I don't have it, I just provide what type of visa and his visa is under skilled worker visa. Now let's move on to the details as an applicant for this ILR application. So make sure you have your passport with you. So the details you provide must be the one that is reflecting in your passport. Next is you must provide all your names. For example, if you have changed your name after marriage or have different name that you have used for professional purposes. Now you will provide the details of your other name and why have you been known by another name. And then if you have the date of your legal change of your name, then you can provide it. And you will answer if you have used your other name upon entering the UK. In the next section, you will confirm if the email you provided can be contacted for any related inquiries about your application. You will also need to provide a contact number. It's either your mobile or telephone number so that they can contact you for any further questions about your application. The next step is you will provide your most recent postal address in the UK. So the next following questions are pretty straightforward. So for example, your sex and relationship status. Next is your nationality, country, and date of birth. So this must be the same as what is reflected in your passport. So next is, do you have a valid passport? So I answered yes because I have a valid passport. So the next question is, do you have a valid national identity card? So my answer to this is no. So the next question is, do you currently hold or have you ever held any other nationality 
or citizenship? So my answer to this is no because I don't have. Now you will provide details about your current home address. How long are you living in this address? And if you own it, rent it or you're living with a family. The next section is about the date of your first entry in the UK as this will serve as a basis of the duration of time towards your application for an ILR. The next part is, do you have a visa or leave to enter or remain or other permission to be in the UK? So my answer is yes. So the next section is checking if you have spent any two or three years continuous period in the Crown Dependencies of the UK and these are the Isle of Man and the Balwicks of Jersey and Guernsey. And my answer to this question is no. So the next part is you will provide information regarding your absences from the UK. So this include your travel and holidays. It is important that you must not spend more than 180 days outside the UK in any 12 months. So you will provide the details of your time spent outside the UK and Crown Dependencies. So that is your country that you visited or traveled through the dates of your departure and arrival to the UK, and the purpose why you spend time outside the UK and the Crown Dependencies. The next question is, have you previously lived in a country outside the UK, including your country of birth? So my answer to this is yes. So in this section, you'll provide the details of your country that you live in, from the start date up to the end date, and the reason that you live there. So in my case, I include the Philippines since that's my home country and I have lived there for quite a long time. And then the time that I have worked and lived in the Middle East, which is Libya. Then the screen will prompt you for your national insurance number. Next is, have you passed the life in the UK test? Of course, you won't proceed to this application if you haven't done the life in the UK test. Then you need to enter the Life in the UK test unique reference number. So you will find that in your Life in the UK test result. So the next question is, have you provided evidence of your English language ability in a previous application? So my answer to this is yes, since I have provided a UKVI English test result when I applied as a tier 2 dependent. So I still have the certificate of my English language test, so I will provide this in my application. So the next question is applicable for those who don't have an English proficiency test certificate. So that degree must be equivalent to the UK bachelor's degree or above. The next question is, have you been refused, deported, removed or required to live or refused entry to the UK border? My answer to this question is no. You also have to declare if you have any problems with immigration to countries other than the UK. Do not conceal any information. In the next section, you will declare if you have any convictions or penalties in or outside the UK. Next is, are you involved in war crimes? So my answer to this question is no. Next is, have you ever been involved in any terrorist activities? My answer is definitely no. Next question is, have you ever been a member of or given support to an organization which has been concerned in terrorism? The next question is, do you have any expressed views that justify or glorify terrorist violence? My answer is no. Have you ever been engaged in any other activities which might indicate that you may not be considered to be a person of good character? Next part is your home office reference number. So if you have the record of this, then you can provide the reference number. If not, you can click no. Next will be the details of your biometric residence permit. So I have a BRP and it is valid. Then you will provide information about your BRP. So the place of issue, enter your permit number, the issue date, and the expiry. You can add an additional applicant in your application as long as they are eligible to apply as an ILR. The next question is, have you received any public funds? My answer is no, definitely not because only permanent visa holders can access public funds. 
so you must tick this part so it will allow the home office to do its verification checks concerning your application so since i am on a dependent visa i will consent the home office to request verification checks for a joint account or for third-party support which is my main visa holder so you can download this consent forms and have it signed by you and your main visa holder which is your spouse or your partner so this will be your document checklist for your ilr application so you must have your passport language test certificate the declaration signed by the main visa holder the verification consents all previous passports or travel documents used to travel to or remain in the uk your current brp card and your evidence of your immigration status so that could be the vignette in your um, passport upon entering the uk the fifth stage of your application is the declaration so i confirm that the details that i provided are all true and i am the applicant of this ilr application now you will choose what kind of service you will use for the submission of your application it could be standard priority or super priority service just take note that you will not be able to change this after you have submitted your application so in my case i chose a priority service which most people get a decision within five working days and it costs three thousand three hundred eighty five pounds and before completing your payment you must review all the information you've provided because you will not be able to return and edit your application afterwards. After completing the online application and your visa payment, you will be directed to UK Visa and Citizenship Application Services to book your appointment for biometrics and uploading of your documents. Take note that the appointment may or may not incur payment. So luckily, I managed to book a free appointment so I only paid for the scanning services, which is £56. Alternatively, you can scan and upload your own documents on your UK VCAS account. So that's it guys. If you find this video helpful, please don't forget to hit the like button and you can share it to your friends and family members who are looking for a step-by-step -step guide in applying for indefinite leave to remain. So once again, thank you for watching this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, guys, what are you waiting for? Please subscribe to my channel and I hope I'll see you soon. Bye-bye!